Hey guys, it's... I just threw my ring. Hey guys, it's Kay. So today, I'm going to be reading you a another one of those story time things. From Reddit to- so shout out to the author John Ravenhill for letting me re read this story for my channel. Much love. This is a fantastic story, honestly. This story is called I Quit the Steel Mill After My First Day. You may not want to read this if you're claustrophobic. My first day in the steel mill- steel mill, okay? Was mainly to walk around and get to know the place and where most of everything was like a normal first day. It was pretty cool to see all the machines working with liquid molten steel. It was also awesome to see it go from start, rock and coal, to finish, steel slabs and billets. My boss walked me and another new guy along, described as much as he could and answered any questions we had. What made me quit was the basement tunnels. The general tour of the place was nearly over. We were in the break room and I was finishing a snack I had bought from a vending machine earlier. A man whose name tag read James Cordell walked over to me, sat down, and gave me a swift slap on the back. New guy, huh? He asked. Yep, that's me, I replied. Hey, can you do me a favor? There might be leaking hydraulic fluid in the basement tunnels. I'd like you to check for me and report back, he said. I didn't know there were hydraulic pipes down there, sir. I said, very confused at his statement. My classes provided in an office building that the mill owned never mentioned this. Oh, they're down there. You just have to look carefully. They should be near the ceiling. Take a flashlight with you. There are places without lights, he said. I shrugged and agreed. We didn't go in during our tour, but I was told that there's not much to be seen down there and it's only dangerous if there's potential flooding. Most of the water that cools the steel finds its way down into the basement tunnels. There are walkways on one side and water flowing on the other side with a waist high concrete divider in between them. After break, I got a flashlight out of a group toolbox and headed to the basement tunnels. I passed through the door leading in and began to look around. Here there were few lights along the walls. They were covered by thick glass and what looked like little cages around them and glowed with a dull yellow light. Most of the tunnel was dim, but I could see okay without a flashlight at this point. I turned it on and looked up, but didn't see any hydraulic pipes. All I could see was water pipes that emptied into the small canal within the tunnel. The water rushed off down the tunnel swiftly. I followed. Surely enough, after some time, there were no more lights along the concrete walls. The floor was muddy. I found it only a little creepy. I'm a pretty rational guy and things like ghosts and spooky stories never really got to me. I know that they're probably all fake and get passed down because humans want to believe in things like that. Excuse me, I'm rambling. The point is that I can put that fear in the back of my mind and make it shut up in order to get something done. At one point, the water canal turned to my right and went into a large, inaccessible pipe in the concrete wall. The tunnel kept on going and I kept looking along the ceiling for the hydraulics pipe. Up above me, I could hear the machines working and felt the vibrations through the floor. There were a set of concrete stairs that led down and turned to my right. Pitch black, except for where my flashlight shined. I continued on. I walked straight for a good long while. The two walls were about 10 feet apart from one another. Gradually, the vibrations from the machines above became lighter and the sounds began stamping. There was another set of stairs that turned to my right and went down. I still didn't see any hydraulic pipes, but I was curious as to where this exactly led. So I turned, walked down the stairs, and kept following the tunnel. The stairs went down about 30 feet to a landing and then another set of stairs went downward in the opposite direction. I followed the tunnel at the bottom of it. There were still no lights anywhere to be seen. I could no longer hear the machines or feel the rumbling vibrations at all. Water dripped from random places. The walls, ceilings, and floors were completely bare concrete. I walked for about 300 yards before I decided to turn back. The tunnel kept going as far as I could see, and there was no way that hydraulics ran down this far. I turned around and headed back toward the stairs. After about a minute of walking, I found them. The only problem was that these were the wrong stairs. What I was looking at was a set of stairs that led down. The stairs that led up were gone. The ceiling kept going until it got to the stairs and angled downward with the stairs. The stairs themselves were a straight shot to a tunnel where it kept going in a straight line as far as I could tell from where I was standing. I stood there for about a minute 
before deciding that going back down was probably a bad idea. I needed to get back up, and there had to be somewhere in here that led back to the entrance. I turned around and began walking the same way I had previously, the tunnel attached and stretched on. I walked for 30 straight minutes before finally stopping to consider my options. Maybe I'm just mixed up and need to turn around, I thought. Perhaps the stairs might lead up again? I turned around and began to walk back. After walking about what I guessed was 300 yards, the tunnel made a sharp angle turn to the left. I knew something was very, very wrong at this point. Either I was hallucinating or this tunnel was alive somehow. I said earlier that I'm not superstitious and can press my fear back. I took a few deeps and got an idea. I took out a permanent marker and drew an arrow on my right side toward the direction I was walking. I rounded the corner and began to walk down the tunnel. I made another arrow after about 10 minutes. After some more walking, I turned around to see if I could find the arrows. Logically, I would find the arrows on my left side, pointing to the opposite way from where I was walking. I found the first arrow on my right side, and in the direction I was currently walking, just before the tunnel took a sharp left. I didn't know what to do now. I kept walking. Either this would go somewhere, or it wouldn't. I turned left again, and the walls were now five feet apart from each other, instead of ten. I continued walking. I don't know for how long, but I found these stairs that led downward again. I followed them, and they landed into another tunnel after about 20 feet. This time, the walls were about four feet away from each other. I must have walked about an hour before my hopes really began to turn into despair. I had heard of the French catacombs and people being lost forever. I began to think that the same was going to happen to me. I began to make arrows along my right side again. This time, they were about every hundred yards. Something far off whispered behind me. I turned around and showed my flashlight beam as straight as I could. Nothing was there. I stood there for a while, waiting. Nothing at all came. I turned back around and found myself facing a solid concrete wall. The tunnel had just ended. I turned and walked in the opposite direction, towards where the whisper came from. I tried to calm myself by saying that distant water dripping can sound like human voices. I put the flashlight in my left hand and drew out of my pocket knife with my right hand. My arrows began to appear on the walls. They pointed in multiple directions, up, left, down, right, diagonal. I know that I didn't draw them that way, but they were still in my own drawing style. The tunnel led to another staircase that led down. No, no, this is bad, I said. I looked behind me and flashed my light down the tunnel. About 20 feet away, it dead ended. I ran down the stairs. At the bottom of the stairs, I didn't bother to estimate the depth the tunnel narrowed where the walls were now only three feet apart from each other. I sprinted in full panic. Black human handprints began to cover the walls and ceiling. After a minute, I finally stopped to catch my breath. I didn't want to look behind me at this point. My flashlight was beginning to go dim. Unintelligible whispers came from behind me at this time. They sounded closer than last time. I turned around yet again. Behind me, the tunnel formed a cross with one tunnel going straight and two side passages faced each other. You and me, I have a knife, let's go, I yelled. I heard footsteps running down the left tunnel. I turned the left corner and began jogging. I had to stop after the tunnel narrowed to the walls being two feet apart. Now I began to squeeze myself through them. The narrow tunnel kept going on and on for what felt like forever. I pushed ahead and eventually found what could only be described as blackness after a certain point. The tunnel stopped, but instead of a bare wall blocking my exit, it was a black rectangle. I eased up to it and put my hand through. Nothing. I felt along the wall to the edge, and there was nothing after that. I stuck my flashlight through and tried to find something, anything, in the blackness. I shined it down and figured out that it was a deep chasm. There was a sheer cliff at the end of the tunnel that went straight down a smooth rock. I couldn't even see the bottom of it. It was an abyss. Footsteps were running behind me. I whipped around, but as I did, my left hand struck the wall and I accidentally let go of the flashlight. It fell down the chasm. Everything was now pitch black. I felt my way along the walls. The hit squeezed even tighter. I had to turn my body sideways and shuffle slowly. My right hand was leading. Unsurprisingly, at this point, I hit a wall in front of me. I banged on it with my fist. I felt with my left hand behind me and began to walk back the other way. I began to honestly contemplate throwing myself down into the chasm. It would have been a release if 
from the current terror I was in. The walls began to widen and I could walk with ease. I was expecting any moment that I would walk right off a cliff, but that didn't happen. Instead, I saw a glow off in the distance. The tunnel widened a bit more and then turned a sharp right. I saw a light fixture that was atop a staircase that led up. There's not much to it after that. I went up the staircase and followed the lights until I made it back into the steel mill. I went to my manager and said I was sorry, but I couldn't work here. He was disappointed and really confused, but I remained determined after he tried to talk me into keeping my job. I didn't want to sound insane, so I didn't tell him what happened to me. As I was walking out, I saw a memorial plaque of people who had been killed in accidents at this mill. One name stood out to me, James Cordell. Okay, so that is the story. I quit the steel mill after my first day. Uh, great story. Thank you very much again, John Ravenhill, for letting me um, narrate this story for me. I hope you liked it. And look forward to more videos soon. Goodbye, guys.